Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be setting up my monthly bullet journal spreads for May and June. To start off with in this May setup, I'm doing pretty much the same block letter drop shadow lettering style that I've been doing in pretty much all of my bullet journal monthly setups so far. For those of you who may not be as familiar with it, the main thing I do is letter the word May with a brush pen, then use a smaller black brush pen to add a drop shadow and anywhere that hasn't been outlined by the black brush pen, I'll outline with a black gel pen. Below that, I'm listing out my goals for the month, and I'm flipping back and forth to other spreads, like my April spread, where I listed out some old goals that I may or may not have accomplished, and another spread that I set up at the very beginning of 2020, where I listed out my goals for the year overall. So in these smaller goals for each month, I'm just breaking down those larger goals into smaller milestones that I can accomplish, you know, in a month. Below that, I'm setting up the same mindful consumption tracker as always. It is in progress. You will see that later in the video. And next to my goals, I'm writing out my habits for the month. The ones I was working on for May were tracking my food to make sure I get proper nutrition every day, reading more often so that hopefully that can become my default activity for when I'm bored instead of just mindlessly browsing the internet, practicing Japanese on Duolingo at least once a day, and stretching after I run or bike or do other exercise because I've been noticing a lot more of the same injuries that I was dealing with during the track and cross country seasons. So time to stretch more often to make sure those do not come back to hit me full force. Overall though, I kept my May spread very minimal. This was pretty much everything. The only other thing I'm adding is my mindful consumption tracker, which is where I list out basically every item I've had an impulse to buy during this month. And then each month I get to choose one item that's not essential. I made some rules for myself as to what is actually essential on some earlier pages. Next, it's time to plan for June, which is going to be my first month of summer, my first month as a graduated person who no longer has to attend high school. It's very exciting, and I reflected my level of excitement by making my June spread a bit more elaborate than any of the other spreads that I have done this year. As you may have noticed, during 2020, I've gone a lot more minimal with my bullet journal, a lot less drawing and decoration and lettering, and mostly just sticking to simple layouts that do their exact functions without taking up too much of my time or effort with extra drawing. Of course, I do love to draw and doodle and add these cute little touches. That's why I have this whole YouTube channel and Instagram page dedicated to aesthetically pleasing bullet journaling and notes. But, you know, I was starting to get distracted and carried away and focusing too much on what kind of aesthetic things would look nice on Instagram and get me more likes and things like that. So throughout the first five months of this year, I was trying to distance myself from that and just focus on what I wanted. This month, towards the end of May, I started to finally feel like I had gotten back to a healthier mindset concerning my bullet journal and how it looks. I've started finally feeling more like I'm doing all of this drawing and doodling because I like it, it's relaxing, and it makes me happy to look at my planner and stay organized. Not because I think I have to do this to maintain my reputation as an aesthetic study grammar or whatever people call themselves nowadays. I don't know, I sound like such a dorky old lady. But anyways, below my drawings of leaves and the June title lettering, I'm setting up pretty much the same systems that I always have. First for this month, I'm setting up my habits. I'm keeping a lot of the same habits as I wanted to work on in May because those are still things I'm struggling to keep up with. But the fourth one that I added is to draw or sketch or design in some way every single day because I want to improve my visual art skills. It's something I find very relaxing and very satisfying. And of course, it does help my part-time job as a YouTube content creator. That is such a weird sentence, but yeah. 
Moving on, next to those habits, I've also set up my goals. Just like for the previous month, these goals are all smaller, broken down versions of the goals that I'm working on for the entire year, along with a few smaller ones that are just based on things that are happening in this month, like my graduation from high school. By the way, I don't know if it's just me in my screen, but this clip seems very slightly out of focus, unfortunately. I think it's because I recently broke my very, very old tripod, and I'm trying to figure out how to do the same overhead setup using a new tripod and a camera that will actually stay on the new tripod because due to the laws of physics, not all of my cameras are light enough to work with every single tripod in the very precarious downward facing angle. If you want to learn more about the downward facing camera thing, I'll link a video about that in the cards right now. But anyways, I'm just sorry for any slight blurriness. Now, in the past, I've decided that 15 lines is approximately my standard mindful consumption chart size, but as you've noticed, it bothered me immensely that the bottom rows of those two charts did not line up. So I fixed that. Love that. Anyways, beneath all of these trackers that I normally do, I noticed there was a pretty substantial empty rectangular space, so I decided to fill this with some doodling and lettering. Lately, I've been very into house plants. I feel like they just really brighten up a space. And since I have allergies and I'm pretty sensitive to air quality as a result, they do really make me feel like my room has cleaner air. I don't know if that's just a placebo thing or if they're actually having an effect. But anyways, I decided that I was very inspired by all of my current house plants and I wanted to draw them in my bullet journal. So of course I did that, why not? Another thing I've been very into lately is doing DIY macrame plant hangers. You can see a couple of them in these drawings. I'm doing a room makeover video sometime soon, eventually, question mark. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a tutorial about how I make macrame plant hangers. I'm not sure how much interest there is in this subject because I feel like macrame is a very old lady associated craft, but maybe that's just a me thing. I don't know. Just let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. Anyways, after I finished drawing all of my hanging plants and these little hanging star decorations next to them, I lettered grow in the same lettering style that I used for the title of June. I just felt like grow fits very well with the whole green and plant thing because, you know, plants grow. And during this month, I want to remind myself to focus on growth. I struggle with focusing too much on perfectionism and comparing myself to other people instead of a productive focus on simply growing and improving on where I am right now. So that's just a reminder I want for myself. And through plants, I kind of want to remind myself that growth is not always perfect. It can go wrong and be messy sometimes, but eventually you will progress and improve and grow. Now that I've said that word approximately 50 hundred thousand times, let's move on to the next spread. Yes, I know, adding something new, isn't that exciting? Instead of simply sticking to the one page setup with all the same trackers as before, I decided that this month I was gonna try something new, and that is a graph of my hours of sleep correlated with my mood. Is that how you describe things? I just took the AP stats test yesterday and I suddenly have forgotten how to describe graphs. Anyways, what I mean to say is that I'm going to be plotting my mood in a rating from one to 10 and the number of hours of sleep I get on the same graph with the same two axes so that I can see if there's a correlation between how much I sleep and how positive my mood is. Honestly, right now, this does not look very exciting or interesting, but hopefully once I've filled it all in, I'll be able to see some interesting patterns. And that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found some inspiration. I post photos of my bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquill, and I post new videos every week. See you next time!